In the early 1970s, audiences were introduced to a groundbreaking TV series based on Martin Caden's 1972 novel Cyborg. This series, simply known as The Show, follows the story of Colonel Steve Austin, played by Lee Majors. After experiencing a near-fatal NASA test flight accident, scientists reconstruct his body with advanced bionic technology, giving him extraordinary strength, speed, and vision. As a result, he becomes a secret agent for the fictitious U.S. government agency OSI. The start of the series is quite unusual, as it doesn't follow the typical path of a pilot episode leading into the first season. Instead, the journey begins with three television movies that were aired in 1973, a year before the series officially started in 1974. The first of these movies introduces the main character, a critically injured astronaut who is given bionic implants to enhance his physical abilities. This leads to a series of events that set the stage for the subsequent movies and the eventual television series. The second and third movies delve deeper into the character's new life, exploring his struggles and triumphs as he learns to cope with his enhanced abilities. These stories provide a rich backdrop for the series, offering a blend of action, drama, and science fiction that would become a hallmark of the show. By the time the series begins in 1974, viewers are already familiar with the main character and his unique situation, allowing the show to hit the ground running with engaging stories that build upon the foundation laid in the previous movies. This unconventional start is just one of the many aspects that make this series a memorable part of television history. The title of the series, often mistakenly thought to refer to the title character's salary, is actually derived from the cost of rebuilding him. After a devastating crash, the character, a test pilot, is rebuilt with bionic implants that enhance his strength, speed, and vision. The high cost of these advanced prosthetics, totaling $6 million, is where the show's title comes from. The series follows the protagonist as he uses his new abilities to work for a government agency, taking on dangerous missions and fighting crime. The ongoing cost of maintaining and upgrading his bionic limbs is a recurring theme throughout the show. Despite the high-tech premise, the series remains grounded in the real world, exploring the implications of advanced technology on the human body and the ethical questions that arise. The show also delves into the character's personal struggles as he comes to terms with his new identity and the limitations of his bionic limbs. Overall, the series offers a unique blend of science fiction, action, and drama with a thought-provoking exploration of what it means to be human. The character's bionic abilities, while impressive, are also a source of isolation and conflict, adding depth and complexity to the story. Whether you're a fan of classic television, science fiction, or just a good story, this series is definitely worth checking out. Steve Austin, the main character of the TV series, is introduced as an arrogant man with a remarkable history as one of the best test pilots in NASA. His life takes a dramatic turn when he suffers a near-fatal accident, leading to the installation of bionic implants in his arm, legs, and eye. Initially, Austin is apprehensive and resents these new additions, viewing them as a hindrance rather than a help. However, as time passes, he learns to adapt to his enhanced abilities. His bionic limbs allow him to run at extremely high speeds, punch through solid walls, and even rescue children in danger. His bionic eye is particularly impressive, boasting a 20 to 1 ratio zoom and infrared capabilities. These features enable him to see objects and people from great distances and in low light conditions. However, the show also highlights a significant drawback, his bionic parts malfunction in extremely cold temperatures. Throughout the series, Austin's character development is evident. He transitions from a self-centered individual to a man who uses his enhanced abilities for the greater good. Despite the challenges and limitations of his bionic implants, he learns to accept and utilize them, transforming him into a true hero. In the opening episode of the TV series, titled Population Zero, the story begins in a small town called Norris. The episode takes off where the movie left off, with the series premiere in 1974. A scientist in Norris has decided to use his knowledge against the U.S. by releasing a gas that renders the town's population unconscious. This act of aggression threatens to set a dangerous precedent if left unchecked. Steve Austin, the show's protagonist, is called upon to step in and stop the scientist from carrying out his plans. As a highly skilled and modified individual, Steve Austin is well equipped to handle the challenges that come his way. With the help of the OSI, he sets out to prevent the scientists from causing any further harm. The episode is a thrilling introduction to the series, which would go on to run for 99 episodes. 
Throughout its run, the show featured a wide range of schemes and plots with Steve Austin and the OSI working together to stop them. The series became known for its exciting action sequences and intriguing storylines, making it a hit with audiences. Lee Majors, the actor who played Steve Austin, worked closely with the show's creators to bring the character to life. His portrayal of the character was a key factor in the show's success, as he brought a level of charm and charisma to the role that endeared him to audiences. Overall, Population Zero is a strong start to a beloved series. With its thrilling plot and memorable characters, it's no wonder that the show became such a hit with audiences. Whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to the series, Population Zero is a must-watch episode that sets the stage for all the excitement to come. In the initial airing of the TV series, protagonist Steve Austin was often depicted engaging in violent acts, which included killing antagonists on several occasions. However, as it became increasingly evident that young viewers were starting to regard Austin as a heroic figure, the creators made a deliberate decision to reduce the amount of violence portrayed in the show. As a result, the later episodes featured a significant decrease in Austin's lethal actions, with his character seldom, if ever, taking lives anymore. Instead, the focus shifted towards showcasing Austin's remarkable abilities while avoiding excessive brutality. This shift allowed the program to maintain its appeal to younger audiences while still delivering thrilling action sequences. In the opening sequence of the TV series, viewers are greeted with a sight of an aircraft crashing. This particular aircraft is no ordinary plane, but rather an M2F2 lifting body configuration done by Northrop. The sound effects that accompany this dramatic scene are not just any random sounds, but the actual audio from a crash that occurred on May 10, 1967, at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The dialogue that was spoken during this crash was re-recorded by the show's lead actor, Lee Majors. The M2F2 lifting body was an experimental aircraft that was part of a series of lifting body vehicles developed by NASA and the Air Force. These aircraft were designed to test the concept of lifting bodies which are aircraft that use the shape of their body to generate lift, rather than wings. The M2F2 was a unique and innovative design, and its inclusion in the opening sequence of the TV series is a fitting tribute to its place in aviation history. The crash that is depicted in the opening sequence is based on a real-life accident that occurred during a test flight of the M2F2. On May 10, 1967, the aircraft crashed during a landing approach, causing significant damage to the vehicle. The pilot, Bruce Peterson, survived the crash but suffered serious injuries. The audio from this crash was recorded and later used in the opening sequence of the TV series, adding a layer of realism to the dramatic scene. The dialogue that is heard during the crash scene was re-recorded by Lee Majors, who starred in the TV series as Steve Austin, the Six Million Dollar Man. The use of Majors' voice in this scene helps to establish a connection between the audience and the character and sets the tone for the rest of the series. In conclusion, the opening sequence of the TV series features an M2F2 lifting body aircraft crashing, with sound effects from a real-life crash at Edwards Air Force Base in 1967, and dialogue re-recorded by Lee Majors. This sequence is a powerful and dramatic way to introduce the show and its lead character, and it serves as a fitting tribute to the innovative and groundbreaking M2F2 lifting body aircraft. The year 1974 brought a new sensation to television screens, offering a thrilling blend of science fiction and real-life heroics. The TV series, with its compelling storyline, centered around the unexpected journey of test pilot Bruce Peterson. Peterson, a skilled and daring aviator, became an integral part of the show, although his real-life experience often overshadowed his fictional persona. Before his leap into the world of the series, Bruce was a trailblazer in the aviation community, pushing the boundaries of human capabilities. However, that fateful day changed everything. During a daring test flight, an unforeseen accident struck, causing him to crash at an astonishing speed of 250 miles per hour. As a result, he suffered a harrowing tumble through the air, enduring a painful six-fold rotation that left him with a shattered memory and a permanent loss of vision in his right eye. The incident was a devastating blow, marking the end of Peterson's flying career and casting a shadow over his aspirations. The constant visual reminders on the screen, as the opening sequences reenacted his crash, were a stark and painful reminder of his past, a bitter pill to swallow for the former test pilot. The show, with its magnificent premise of a man enhanced with advanced technology, didn't shy away from integrating bits of Peterson's story into its narrative. 
For Peterson, watching the series was not a nostalgic journey, but a poignant reminder of what could have been. Each episode, with its relived trauma, served as a haunting testament to the risks pilots take and the sacrifices they make. Ironically, the show, despite its heightened action and futuristic themes, opened a dialogue about the human cost of pushing the limits of technology. Peterson's character, now wearing a suit that could withstand incredible force and agility, seemed detached from his own personal pain. Yet, it served as a stark reminder of the real-life heroes who paved the way for such advancements. In the end, the TV series, though initially a source of immense discomfort for pilot Peterson, resonated with audiences worldwide, capturing their imagination and leaving an indelible mark on pop culture. As the series evolved, so too did the tension between the relatable tragedy and the awe-inspiring action, reflecting an intricate balance between fiction and reality. Martin Caden, the creator of the popular 1974 TV series, led an interesting life before his death in 1997. Born and raised in Cocoa Beach, Florida, Caden developed a deep attachment to the Space Coast area. After attending college and pursuing writing, he returned to Cocoa Beach, where he would spend the rest of his days. Caden is best known for authoring the book Cyborg, which served as the basis for the television series. In the novel, Caden introduced the character of Dr. Rudy Wells, a name he borrowed from a local physician who practiced medicine in an unorthodox manner. This real-life Dr. Wells was quite the character, known for cruising around his office on roller skates while seeing patients. Despite his quirks, he was highly respected in the medical community and regarded as one of the most accomplished physicians in the region. As for Steve Austin, the main character in the TV series based on Caden's work, the author created him by combining elements from both the cyborg book and the real-life Dr. Wells. However, it wasn't just Dr. Wells who inspired the creation of Steve Austin. Caden drew inspiration from other sources too. For instance, he was influenced by the growing interest in human enhancement through technology during that time period. After the success of the TV series, Caden continued to live in Cocoa Beach until his passing in 1997. His ashes were scattered from the air over this beloved area, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire fans of science fiction and pop culture alike. In the spring of 1977, just before the start of what would be the final season of the popular TV series, a contract dispute arose between the show's producers and the lead actor, Lee Majors. Majors refused to go to work until his contract demands were met, leaving the producers in a difficult position. At one point, it was even reported that the producers were considering hiring a new actor to take over the series. Among the actors they considered were Gil Gerard, Bruce Jenner, and Harrison Ford. However, when it came to Ford, the producer stated that he was unsuitable as an action hero. Interestingly, as we now know, Ford would go on to become one of the biggest action stars of all time, proving the producer wrong. Despite the contract dispute, the show was able to continue with Majors in the lead role, and it remained a hit with audiences until its final season. The show had become a cultural phenomenon, and Majors' character had become an iconic figure in the world of television. The contract dispute was a brief hiccup in the show's production, but it did not diminish the enduring popularity of the series. The show had a profound impact on popular culture, and Major's portrayal of the lead character was a significant contribution to the show's success. Despite the challenges that arose during the production of the final season, the show remained a captivating and beloved part of television history. The television series that captured audiences' attention in the 1970s, later known as The Six Million Dollar Man, featured a character named Jamie Summers in a spin-off series called The Bionic Woman. This show ran from 1976 to 1978 and became a significant turning point for TV networks. Before The Bionic Woman, superhero fantasy was often relegated to comedy parodies like the 1966 Batman series. However, the success of The Bionic Woman spin-off convinced networks that superhero stories could be prime-time entertainment gold. Jamie Summers, a former tennis professional, was nearly killed in a skydiving accident. Through the wonders of technology, she received bionic implants that gave her extraordinary abilities, including superhuman strength and speed. The Bionic Woman was not just an action-packed series, but also explored deeper themes. It delved into Jamie's struggles to balance her new abilities with her personal life and the ethical implications of advanced technology. The impact of The Bionic Woman was far-reaching. It paved the way for other superhero series explicitly based on comic book characters. This shift in programming marked a new era in television 
one where superheroes were no longer confined to the pages of comic books, but became household names. In essence, the Bionic Woman was more than just a spin-off. It was a pioneer, pushing the boundaries of what television could offer. It introduced a strong, complex female character with extraordinary abilities, capturing the hearts of millions and leaving an indelible mark on television history. In the first and second seasons of the popular 1974 TV series, the character of Dr. Rudy Wells was portrayed by Alan Oppenheimer. However, when the third season came around, Oppenheimer left the show and was replaced by Martin Brooks, who became a regular cast member for the remainder of the series. Interestingly, Oppenheimer did return for one final episode in season three, where flashbacks to a previous episode were featured. The producers decided not to reshoot the scenes, but instead brought back Oppenheimer to reprise his role as Dr. Wells. This episode showcased both actors in their respective portrayals of the character, providing a unique glimpse into the evolution of Dr. Wells throughout the series. During the filming of the first season, the lead actor, Lee Majors, was described as fairly approachable by many members of the production crew. However, as the show gained popularity, something changed. Majors began to shy away from the rest of the cast and crew, preferring to spend time only with a select group of friends on set. This behavior came as a surprise to some, as Majors had previously been known for his friendly demeanor. But with fame and success came a shift in his interactions with others. It seemed that the more popular the show became, the more isolated Majors became from those around him. Despite this, there is no denying the impact that Lee Majors had on the success of the show. His portrayal of the lead character was captivating, and his performance resonated with audiences around the world. It's important to remember that celebrities are human beings too, with their own unique personalities and preferences. While some may thrive in the spotlight, others may find it overwhelming. In the case of Lee Majors, it seems that he fell into the latter category. Regardless, his performance in the show will always be remembered and cherished by fans of the series. And who knows, perhaps one day, Majors will open up about his experiences during that time and give us all a better understanding of what he was going through. Until then, we can only speculate and appreciate the incredible work that he did on the show. The popularity of the 1974 TV series came as a surprise, but an unexpected effect of its success was discovered by the producers. Some children who were avid fans of the show began to deliberately injure themselves, hoping to receive bionic parts like the show's main character, Steve Austin. This troubling trend led the producers, and even Lee Majors, the actor who played Steve Austin, to write letters to at least a few of these children. The letters aim to make it clear that the show is purely fictional, and that intentionally harming oneself is not only dangerous but also futile. The idea of obtaining bionic limbs like Steve Austin's was undoubtedly captivating to young viewers. After all, the character's enhanced abilities showcased incredible strength, speed, and agility. However, the show's creators never intended for their fiction to inspire such dangerous behavior. The producers and Lee Major's actions demonstrate a sense of responsibility towards their audience, particularly the young fans. By addressing the issue directly, they hoped to prevent further harm and ensure that viewers understood the difference between reality and fiction. It is crucial to remember that, while fictional stories can inspire and entertain us, they should never encourage harmful behavior. In this case, the producers and Lee Majors took swift action to ensure that their young fans understood this important distinction. As the series progressed, the creators decided to experiment with a new look for the lead character. Near the end of the show's run, Steve Austin, played by Lee Majors, grew a mustache. This new look, however, did not sit well with the audience. The idea was met with harsh criticism, and the mustache was quickly shaved off. Despite the unpopularity of this new look, several commercial tie-ins had already been produced, including a comic book and a lunchbox. These items featured Steve Austin with his short-lived mustache, serving as a reminder of the failed experiment. The quick reversal of this change and the lack of follow-through in the show itself suggests that the creators were quick to respond to the audience's disapproval. In the end, the iconic image of Steve Austin remains unchanged, with his clean-shaven face being remembered by fans of the series. The brief experiment with a mustache serves as an interesting footnote in the history of the show, but ultimately, it was a change that was not meant to be. Moving beyond its domestic success, the TV series also gained popularity overseas. However, it's interesting to note that in some countries, the show's title was altered due to cultural sensitivities. In Israel, for instance, the name was changed to The Man Who Is Worth Millions. 
This adjustment was made because the original title's reference to 6 million might evoke immediate associations with the Holocaust in the Jewish population. This change is a testament to the local adaptations that international versions of popular media often undergo. By altering the title, the show's producers and distributors demonstrated respect for the cultural context of their audience, ensuring that the program's appeal wouldn't be marred by unintended connotations. This adaptation underscores the global reach of the series, while highlighting the importance of cultural sensitivity in international broadcasts.